It is time for Current Events Tuesday. Woo! Woo! Yeah, I want to know what's trending. What's trending? What's happening in the world, right? Yeah. My name is Justin. And I'm JP. And we are the Podcasting Dead. Yes, we do talk about The Walking Dead from the name, but that is not all. There's so much more once you get to know us. It's a lot of layers. Just keep peeling. Just a lot. Just, just you got to peel through it, right? Right. Right. Or however you, you know, you get down, claw it off. I don't know. Yeah, whatever gets you there, I guess. Yeah. Uh, but uh, so today, this segment is where we talk about current things happening in the world. We just get on the internet basically between like Google and Yahoo. I haven't been to Bing in forever. And just see things that people are posting, like a lot of the sources that we use. And we'll try to cite sources as we go because, I mean, a lot of them we just find are from like local news stations or they are from like daily wire right um, fun stuff you, you know, know things we're, like we're not that. gonna get into like the the mueller report or anything like no, that, no 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 know? no we're just talking about interesting studies things like that yeah. uh don't forget to hit that subscribe button regardless of where you're listening be it on youtube soundcloud cast box wherever go ahead and hit the subscribe button what can it hurt it's give us a like good. And uh, if you if you enjoy the podcast, stick around afterwards. We'll give you some social media info uh, to follow us. But in the meantime, let's get this show on the road. I say that, and I do not have a uh, actual a story pulled up. First, let's go to something that we do have a podcast about. Let's talk Game of Thrones. Oh, man, what are we talking about? If you're a Game of Thrones fan, make sure you look through our playlist, find our Game of Thrones playlist, because we do a episode review and discussion for each episode, which won't last much longer, being we've only got two left. I know. But, but even Gotta still. Find a new TV show to watch. So from what I found on the internet, it turns out uh, that Daenerys, Miss mm-hmm. Khaleesi herself, she can't get ready to rule those seven kingdoms without her Starbucks. Yeah, you know, I've I seen, can't get up and moving in the morning without coffee. I've seen that picture. Pretty pretty ridiculous. So uh, it's why should it be any different for her for the Mother of Dragons? But Starbucks received about $11.6 million in free advertising thanks to that coffee cup that accidentally made its way onto the set. I don't, I've never directed and done film work. I've always thought it would be awesome, and I think that's ultimately where I wanted to go in life. But I believe I'd be one of those people to where it's like nothing... Like that is allowed on set. You want a sip of coffee? You got to walk off set to go get your coffee. Yeah, I mean, most jobs I've ever had, you can't just be chilling with your coffee. You, you got that I'm fancy saying? chair with your name over in the corner. Put yeah. your coffee on that. Don't bring that on set. Now Idiots. I don't. Um, I don't know. They say it was from Craft Services, but everybody's been calling it a Starbucks cup. So it might not have even necessarily been a Starbucks cup. But regardless, people are calling it that, and it's giving them a ton. of of uh, free advertising. So, do they know whose cup that was? Was that uh, Amelia Clark's coffee? Um, I'm looking. Or was it like I, a production assistant? I don't, that just I, sat it there. I don't see. Um, I need to know. I need I, to know who to hate. I don't know. They won't call it. And maybe it was. Well, you know, let, me, let me correct myself. Maybe it was Starbucks, but they but HBO refuses to call it Starbucks. Mm-hmm. They just call it Craft Services. But. Um, but yeah, and, and, and actually, it's pretty funny because um, Starbucks tweeted and said, "Quote: To be honest, we're surprised she didn't order a dragon drink." Uh, Good one, HBO. But so yeah, I mean, like I said, when you when you're about to go to war with Cersei Lannister, I mean, you got to have your caffeine. I guess. Man. I don't see what the big deal is. What's your favorite coffee, JP? I'm not really a coffee guy. What? No, I mean I'll drink it every now and then, but no, I'm not a I'm not a coffee person. Mm. I, I've been I've actually been drinking monsters here lately because we, my girlfriend had a baby, so we've been in the hospital a lot, and they did have coffee, but it wasn't really that good. But they also sold monsters downstairs. So the last few days, I've been just kind of drinking the stockpile that I had bought, but mm-hmm. typically I have to have my coffee. Yeah. No monster is really good for you, but I try to get the zero sugar, zero calories. This new one's called uh, Free Advertising for Monster. It's called Ultra Paradise. Uh huh. Whoo, that thing is delicious. Yeah, if I've got to do an energy drink, I, I usually do the Red Bull. I like Red Bull. Yeah. I can get down with Red Bull. But uh, moving on, JP, what is your favorite physical feature on uh, a woman or man? You know, whatever gets you there. Uh, both. I've got legs. I'm a leg man. I You're like a le- nice calf. I like a, a hearty thigh. Okay. Well, searching through weird surveys and things that have come out uh, in the last few days, I found on Mirror.com they had the 10 ugliest physical features according to men and women. Mm. So get ready to be judged. Well, you know I'm a toe man. So according to women, the worst features that a man can have right. are a bad mouth or bad teeth, mm-hmm. being overweight or obese, mm-hmm. being too short, Ooh. having bad skin, too much body hair, 
an ugly or crooked nose, bad hair or a bald spot. Uh, <clears throat> you, you wear hats, though, so what does it matter, right? You're good. Uh, uh, bad posture. You wear that while you're making love, right? You leave the hat on. Well, I actually wear a yarmulke when you, I'm making love. Oh, that's weird. I figured yeah. you just like, you know, hat. Well, there you go. I'm giving you a cool move. Just look at her and just twist the hat around backwards and be like, it's time to take that ass to pound town, boo. Uh, Sorry, yeah, we try I, to keep this one a little cleaner. If, so I if, I, if, I, if I have made it far enough to actually get them naked in my bed, then I, you know, <laughs> they're, they're down for whatever nastiness is, is coming. So. Also, they say bad posture, long or dirty fingernails, and being too scrawny or skinny. So we don't have too many of those no, going no, for us. I, I, mean, uh, I check the bald box. I check... Um, Eh, not too, uh, too much. I was going to say, we're, you know, I mean, which I, we hadn't been in the gym in a while. For a while there, we were in really good shape and more athletically leaned. But I mean, we, we're not huge guys, but we're not scrawny either. I, I mean, I'm, I, I don't know. I don't know that you want to say your weight. I mean, I weigh somewhere between, you uh, typically between 180, 190. I don't really consider that scrawny. Yeah, I haven't but, stepped on scale in forever. But as far as the hairy thing goes, man, up. you know, I'm, I'm kind of a hairy guy. And, some chicks love it, and other chicks are just. I have met really chicks who said they it. don't like when guys like do laser hair removal. They like hairy guys. Right. So I mean, it just that's one of those things, you know. Yeah, um, but yeah, we definitely gotta get back in the gym, man. I'm starting to get this dad bod thing, and I'm not digging it. Mm. Not digging it. According to men, the worst features that women can have are being overweight, eyes that are too close together or too far apart. That's hmm. really specific. A bad, a big nose, bad skin, a poor figure. No butt or too much butt. Be, God, I'll take too much over not it's, enough. It's right. It's like not enough. That's, mm, that's you really. can lose ass quicker than you can gain ass. Or maybe that's, I don't know. Being skinny without any muscle tone, a bad mouth or bad teeth, bad makeup or too much makeup, and having a unibrow. Oh, yeah. Mm. Now, Will, I'm not going to go in on that because I'm not, you know, I'm not... I, I'm a case by case basis when it comes to women, which I've got a girlfriend now, you know, so that don't matter. Right. But, you know, when I'm looking, it depends on the girl more so than all of that. Like, I mean, I got to have a conversation with her first, you know. I don't I don't need um, a conversation, but I do love summertime because they be in those flip flops. I can check out the feet, see how they keeping them up. I don't like any, I, am a, I don't I am like a, any kind of feet. No kind of I know you like to suck toes. I we covered like to that on a toes. past podcast. I do not like feet. It does not matter what they look like. I'm not going to like I them. get my tongue up between between the uh, toes, I'll be licking down the because you know they get to crinkling those feet, man. I ain't I ain't kidding either. I suck on some toes. I lick some feet. Are you done? I can keep going. I mean, get it out of your system. It's good. I'm telling you, man. It's a portal to ecstasy. All right, I'm about to gross you out. You ready? Oh, jeez. This is gonna be this is about mayonnaise. No, no, oh. no, 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 no. I wouldn't do that to you. All right, so check this out. I'm gonna let you guess. Let you take a guess here. All right, according to uh, Quality Logo logo Products, I actually found this just Googling weird surveys. um, 4.4% of Americans uh, only change this every four days. What do you think this is? Let me do that. I I got kind of 4.4% of people only change this every four days. What is it they change? Um. uh... Socks, maybe? I don't know. Close. That's gross. Kai, we were talking about feet. I thought maybe socks. Close. 4.4% of Americans wear the same pair of underwear Jeez, for four uh, days. Oh I mean, that's only a, that's a small percentage of the people surveyed, only 4.4%, but still, that's disgusting. They wear them four or more days before they change them, according to a new survey. Uh, and another 9% of people wear the same pair for two to three days. That's why they be stinking. Do they at least like turn them inside out or any of that? It doesn't say, but the only time the only time I don't change underwear daily is if I'm like backpacking, which even then I'll still try to bring. It's just a, if you do like backpacking, you got to understand when you're hiking for all these miles, like uphill and over rocks and stuff, really every ounce and every pound count so you really do want to lighten your load so if i'm yeah. going for one overnighter then i usually won't bring a change but if i'm going to stay for more than a night then i'll bring an extra pair because you got to change your you got to change your un- underwear Dude. man got to that's gross four or five days though get out of here yeah that is disgusting jp how often do you change your underwear uh daily sometimes twice a day uh, you know in the summertime you come home then you got to go back out you know you've worked up a sweat so mm. got to keep my boys dry dry and cool no oh, absolutely i'll give a plug to a hanes uh, comfort fit underwear with the moisture guard mm-hmm. stuff really helps 
All right. Well, uh, uh, let's check this out. This is uh, this is pretty interesting. So, uh, according to Business Insider, they've released this uh, new little list of four big money mistakes that young people make. So let's listen up and see how many apply to us, because probably all of them. So, number one, taking a carefree approach. So you have to play catch up. Uh, like someone who decides to start saving for retirement later once they're making more money. Then before they know it, they're 40 and they still don't have a plan. Creating a lifestyle focused on spending uh, instead of saving. It's more common now because of the whole fear of missing out and YOLO mentality. So you end up spending all of your money instead of saving 20% like you're supposed to. Number three, relying on credit cards too much and not paying attention to your credit score. Building good credit is super important. I will attest to that as you get to adulthood Get that credit up. It will uh, it will definitely help you out because you end up with lower interest rates, which makes it easier to buy a house and get a loan and all of that good stuff. And number four, not preparing for emergency expenses, which goes hand in hand with taking a carefree, carefree approach and being just too optimistic. And, uh, you know, when something happens like you lose your job, you know, it's immediate panic mode because you ain't got no money. So never a good feeling. Do you adhere to any of those? Does that des- any of those describe you? I'm, I'm trying to get better about saving up. You know, I, I have a certain amount that I try to keep in my bank. Right. We've discussed this before. I, I have a cer- I actually have. You know, I I am proud to say just through frugal spending and mm-hmm. being a tight ass, I've doubled that amount here in recent times. But I used to have this one amount. And I was like, I need to have at least this in my bank account. That way, it'll cover me a little bit with emergencies mm-hmm. or you know if something comes up with my car, whatever. And I'm not always good on that. Sometimes it dips way below because there's just too many things that I want to get. Mm-hmm. But I do try to keep it there. And I got my dad trying to convince me to go out and buy a drone now. Right. You know, which Come is on, an man. Iron Man drone, so I kind of want it. Oh, uh, yeah, man. That's a tough decision. Do you do any kind of saving or any anything I'm, at all? I'm, get, I'm getting better, man. You know, tightening my belt, not hitting the drive-thrus as much. My, my 401k is not, a, it's not great, but it's, you know, not bad either. So... Right. Yeah. Now, let me ask you something, JP. Okay. Are you ready for this? Uh, I hope so. I'm going to ask it, so I hope that you're ready. If you're not, well, you know, we'll be okay. So, what job do you think had the biggest salary increase in the past year? Oh, man. According what? to Business Insider. Make sure to cite those sources. Well, I know it's not teachers because no one's taking care of teachers. Um, Actually, here in our hometown, Teachers are making pretty darn good money. Is that right? When we just had those guys in that we had the the administrator in the other mm-hmm. week talking about, you know, they actually it's one of the highest in Virgi- in our in our in, in Virginia, I think. Huh. I have to check back on that part, but I know that they're making pretty good money. So I bet this is like the uh, the area nobody wants to teach in. So like they pay them more just to come <laughs> here. You know, what I'm I saying? need to reach these kids. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. In South Park. If you didn't get where well, that, that's, that's from, from the. Uh, I know it was from you know it was yeah, it was from a movie. movie Stand by Me or something. Yeah, Stand but no, I was just I doing know. more of the Eric Cartman yeah, take on it. God, but um, it a great movie. Anyway, what job is making uh, got a the biggest increase in pay in the past year? In the past year, jeez, that's the, that's tough, man. Um, I, you got me stumped. Just give me a guess. Throw something out there. I'm trying to think of a job that like is kind of accommodates. Um, like new lifestyle, something with the internet. What's a job with the internet? Negatory. No. The job Web that designers. I'm talking about. What? Web designers. No. But you already said no internet. So. Bartender. Bartender. Really? Yep. Apparently, um, the average salary jumped 96 percent in the last year. Now, granted, that's an increase in median salary. You know, from like 32 thousand to 35 thousand, but it's still a big jump. Not I mean, bad. an extra couple grand a year goes a long ways. It's like an extra couple, extra hundred or two a month. You know? Yeah, no so, um, and that's a car payment or you know uh, insurance, depending on how many hundreds. Mm-hmm. But uh, some other jobs that jumped up were bank tellers, truck drivers, cashiers, security officers, and wait for it, all right, web developers. Web de- so you okay. were not far off. That you were, you were close. There, you, you you come you were, you were hitting around it. But yeah, I mean it's pretty interesting and it's cool to see that in today's time too that uh you know people are kind of putting more emphasis back on trades too this whole thought that you have to go to college for four years and just accrue this massive debt that you're going to spend your life paying off just to be successful and it's like there's plenty of skills out there you can go take like a one to two year course that isn't expensive can be paid off easily and make you tons of money yeah man i know plenty of english majors like working at grocery stores and stuff 
Oh, yeah. Well, and sometimes, too, man, I mean, I hate to sound like a parent here, but, you know, sometimes people go to college for the stupidest things. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, if you're going to go to a school, to go to go to school for French literature, okay, that's cool. Are you going to go to France? Are you going to teach French literature? But they go to school for something, and I'm not again. I'm not knocking it if that's your passion. Don't get all you know bundled up on that. I'm not saying if your passion is French literature, there's something wrong. That's awesome that you're into it. But go for something a little more realistic that you enjoy doing, and then put yourself to school for you know through French mm-hmm. French literature and maybe an opportunity. That people just don't think, and they think with their. I don't know. You got to dream big, I know, and you should definitely be whatever you want to be. But at the same time, be smart about it. You know what yeah. I mean? Like if you're going to go study, I don't know. You know, again, the French literature might have been a bad example, but just something, you know, something off the wall that there's not much real world use for. I mean, be prepared to struggle finding a job, or at least maybe look at some job options before you sign up for the courses. Yeah, man. Well, I mean, even to like broader stuff, like an English major or a history major, I know lots of people who went for those with no desire to be a teacher. And at the end of the day, I mean. So what did they go for? What were they planning to do with the English? You know, I, I know some English people who wanted to, you know, get into publishing and stuff like that. But I mean, right. you know, the area we live in, it's not like there's a lot of publishing jobs. Not a so big they, demand for that. Yeah. So they just not around here. doing retail or whatever, because, I mean, they got this degree. They don't want to teach. They don't want to move. So, you know. Yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah. yeah, my brother is uh, going to college right now. And uh, and I was trying to tell him he was going to go for radio to do like I do. And uh, I told him, I was like, I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm glad that you want to do what I do. And I love what I do. And it's mm-hmm. a good career. But at the same time, it's one that, like, I fell into. You really have to kind of, you know, you get a lot, you know, ra- a lot right. of radio in our area, unless you're willing to really go out mm-hmm. and search. You know, I mean, it's not anything that's going to be around here or in demand. So Yeah, I was going to say, it's not like there's just a, a ton of radio jobs. I mean, Right, so I had told him, I said, why don't you major in marketing, which is something you can take to tons. I mean, our hospital in town has a yeah. marketing team, you know, and you get to be creative and, and do fun stuff and things like that. And then, like, let, let communications be your minor. And then that way, trust me, as a station manager, I can tell you, if you got a degree in marketing, mm-hmm. which is something we can use, and you yep. also minored in radio, I'm definitely going to hire you. Yep. But if I'm not available to hire you, there are lots of other places you can go yep. with that degree. But I think he's stuck with communications. But Well, there's still a lot but of that's, stuff you can right. go into yeah, with I was that. Just saying, I mean, he, can still go into, he can still go into, like, you know, TV. I mean, it's a lot of different. Oh, I think yeah. he wants to be a sportscaster. I think that's his ultimate dream, to be like a, a baseball sportscaster or something to that Yeah, effect. buddy, I graduated from high school with the NC, uh, went to NC State. He works for ESPN now. Huh. Yep. NC State? Yeah. You said? What's yeah. It? So he, he, like, announces their college games or something? Uh, he has something to do with it. I, I don't know if he's, a, like, an actual announcer, but I know he works for uh, ESPN and, you know, so hmm. I don't know. So this one I found uh, on Yahoo.com. Yeah, telling you we we thanks we 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 owe special thanks to Google and Yahoo for making this Tuesday podcast possible. Yeah, they definitely <laughs> Search out, engine don't they? man. So, but this is a, a new survey out for Mother's Day because you know that's right around the corner. JP, have you got I your know. mom anything? I th- no, but I, like I heard somebody talking about Mother's Day on the radio Sunday, and I was just like, oh my god, is is today Mother's Day? I totally forgot, but it's not. So we'll see, and that's the thing too. Now. Like now that I have a a child. I feel like I need to get my girlfriend something yeah, for Mother's dude. Day. But my dad was like, I'm confused. He was like, I always thought Mother's Day was like, you buy something for your mother because she's your mother. And I'm like, yeah, but I think that they, you know, the broad sense is that, you know, you reward the mothers in your life. I was going to say your now, mother, yeah. the mother of your child. It incorporates all the, uh, all the mothers. Which means now. I better be getting a Father's Day gift this year. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, man, that, all these made-up holidays to sell carts and candy, they drive me crazy. Commercialism. That's what I'm saying. Would that be the right term? If you can't appreciate the mother or whoever in your life on a, a daily or semi-daily basis, then shame on you. Like, just, you know, a couple times a year, do something f- special for mom. Say, mom, let me take you out to dinner. Or, you know, just like on Sundays. Or some, I don't know, man. Right. I don't like these. Uh, I these get where you're going. Holidays, I've always you know said I think things like weddings and Valentine's Day and all of that are just a crock of crap because yeah. it's all just to sell products, and we just scheme. we just feed right into it. You know what right. I mean? But um, I mean, and if you enjoy those things, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with you. But I mean, I don't enjoy Valentine's Day, so the fact that I have to go out and spend money on that, I'm like, damn holiday. Yeah. But you know, now whereas Christmas, I don't fuss about it because I like Christmas. I enjoy right. Christmas, so it's just it's subjective in a way. But it is still a. It's, I like it's, Easter, man. You're not really obligated to buy anything, I guess, unless you have kids. You got to buy some candy, but you can. Cook out. I mean, it's you know, right. It's a laid back holiday.
Well, where I was going was a new survey for Mother's Day found that the average mom today spends about 97 hours a week taking care of their kids. 97 what? hours a week. Ooh. And if they got paid for all that work, they'd make just over 100000 a year. So those were like paid hours. Well, thank goodness the uh, the smile of your child is payment enough. That's what they say. So the most uh, common jobs that moms tend to take on are things like cook, housekeeper, meal planner, um, launderer. I'm guessing that means Laund- laundry. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> Money launderer. I don't know. <laughs> mama's, pop- cooking, mama's, mama's cooking the books. Yeah. <laughs> Teacher, nurse, life coach, personal assistant, therapist, and event planner. Hmm. The average mom spends 46 minutes a day cooking. For 53% of moms don't get enough sleep. 47% feel like they don't have enough time to pursue hobbies or hang out with friends. See, you change that. you got to make time for yourself. Yeah. 69% of moms in the survey said they wish they could spend even more time taking care of their kids. Wow. So even though that's the special thing about moms, man. And it's Mother's Day, so it's kind of like a Mother's Day edition yeah. of it. but. So to all the moms out there, you rock. That's the great thing about moms. Like right there, all the trouble they go through. And honestly, they would do even more of it if they could. I'm telling you. Moms are special. You're going to go home and you go, what are you doing for your mom for Mother's Day, JP? I really hadn't thought about it, man. I mean, maybe uh, she'll probably want to cook out or something, but mm. we'll see. Maybe take her to Olive Garden. There you go. And speaking of moms, continuing on that with what I found uh I found this on, well, I found it on Google, but it was from the Detroit Free Press. So uh, there's this mom in Michigan, and she's been trying to get her bachelor's degree, um, and she just graduated, right? Meanwhile, her son also graduated from uh, the same college, and both of their commencement ceremonies were this past Saturday. Oh, no, wait a minute. I'm sorry. I messed that up. I messed that up. Um, No, they did not go to the same college. Sorry, that kind of mm-hmm. defeats the whole point of the story. So, oh. whoop, start over, rewind. So, there's a mother in there's a mother in Michigan, and she goes to Ferris State University, and she just graduated. Meanwhile, her son also graduated from Central Michigan, and both of their commencement ceremonies were this past Saturday at different schools. Right, hmm. so the mom could only go to one, and of course, as moms tend to do, she chose her child over herself. So she sure. went to her see her son graduate. Now, this is the awesome part. And we love to give you feel-good stories because there's so much negative media out there. We don't want to add to the just plethora of yeah. just negativity coming out of the media. So here's something to make you feel good. Somehow, the president of, of CMU found out about it right before the ceremony, and he got on the phone with the president at Ferris State. And then in the middle of, of her son's graduation, the president of CMU surprised them by presenting both of them with their degrees. So mother and son got to graduate together. How do you like that? That's another thing I can do without his graduation ceremonies, man. She he gave sure he gave the the mom her own cap, awarded her a degree on half of F, FSU, and asked her to please move her tassel to the left side of her cap. CMU posted a video, and the son's reaction is the best part because of how excited he is for her. So I agree, uh, the graduation ceremonies suck, but in this right yeah, there, that's, that's, that's awesome very story, special. But... That's that's so sweet. But yeah, dude. Oh, my gosh. Like, I hadn't been to a graduation ceremony in a long, long time. And I went to my little brother's last year. It mm-hmm. is That is miserable. Dude, it is so miserable. Boring. Oh, my gosh, man. I thought, like, listening to a very, like, boring preacher on Sundays oh was God. the worst. But, like, this, oh, my gosh, dude. It, I mean, it's hot. It's crowded. There's not enough seating. And, like, in our town, they do it in the high school gymnasium, which mm-hmm. does not have the air conditioning uh, ability. Ooh. To cool that many people down. So you're hot, you're sweaty, you stand in line for like 30 minutes. And I mean, it's just, I know it's a big day for them, but the thing is, half those kids don't want to be there either. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like there's just a better way to do it. I'm not saying scrap it together, but there's got to be something different they can do. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. My high school graduation, Willie Nelson and Bob Dylan were both playing in like a mile or not a mile, an hour down the road. And I really wanted to go, but of course, had to go to stupid I was graduation. Say, Willie Nelson was playing a mile down the road in our town. Like, where was this at? Yeah, I'm in an hour up the uh, up the highway. That's still not bad, though. That's close. Nah, man, I really wanted to go, but anyway. Mm, 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 mm. Well, uh, yeah, it's 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 not. So you were at your graduation ceremony? Yeah, I was there. Begrudgingly. I was, I was at mine. It was, And my little brother's two kids got to fighting, of course. Like, mm. yeah, I hate to sound like an old person, but at my graduation, nobody got to fighting. I mean, it just went, went through and it was done. It took forever, though. I had a my graduating class. We had like three hundred and something people. So yeah. that's th- and that's another thing too. When you're listening to that, if you're like, oh, that's 
that's kind of selfish. But you understand that our high school, too, in my town, see, in JP's town here where we're at now, mm-hmm. they have multiple high schools where they, you know, spread out the population. Some go to, you know, depending well, on where you live, right? Well, we actually, the, our graduation was at the uh, the, the college, like a uh, right. like thing up there. Yeah, so they just file in the different high schools. And it's a really nice facility. All together? I mean, different times. But yeah, and I think they might split between a couple of days. I don't know. Okay, so they did. They didn't put you all together. So you no. didn't have like three, four hundred people in your graduating class. No, they just file in the different schools. See, we had almost four hundred people in my graduating Jeez. class, and it is miserable, man. I remember just sitting there in that cap and gown, just uncomfortably hot, and oh, it sucked. And then they, you know, they never pick the students who give the good speeches. Mm-hmm. Like we just, we get the very boring like. Yeah, I don't know. I just I I didn't I didn't really enjoy my graduation either. But that, that was one good thing. It's a nice facility, air conditioning, so it wasn't like uncomfortable. I, it was just a big fat waste. Yeah. Of time. So if I sound so. like a negative Nancy, I understand it's because I've had a very negative experience with it. <laughs> yeah. I just don't. I don't like these ceremonial things. I just you know. I don't know. You think that that's because you think it's got anything to do with just like anxiety and just not wanting to be around that many people? Ah, uh, man, I'm sure that plays into it. But I just, I, I don't know, man. I just think, like I said, it's a waste of time in my opinion. Like funeral processions, you know, let's just inconvenience everyone on the road that day instead of just, you know, like any other thing, just everyone meet at this place at this time. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I can understand. I um, I hate funeral processions. I like. I went to a funeral, man. There was this really. I mean, he's a great guy. I thought the world of him. This guy was one of those people. I've known him since I was a kid. You know, he he had a daughter that was my age. So mm-hmm. we grew up, to, and he lived like a half a mile down the street. So she and I grew up riding four wheelers together and fishing, and just like grew up together our whole lives. And her dad was just this great guy, and he unfortunately passed away of bone. I think it was bone cancer. Um, like a year or two ago, right? Really good guy. I loved what they did. They didn't have a funeral. Like, they had a private funeral with just the immediate family. And then what they did was had, you know, you have other people do this, but theirs really was. It was like a celebration of life. So what they did at their house was had this big old cookout. There was no set time you had to be Mm -hmm. there. So there wasn't a line of traffic and everything. You could come and go anytime during these couple of hours. And and then what they did was, like, at one point they did, like, talk about him. Like, if anybody wanted to speak, they could. And I'm like, man, that's how I would want my funeral to be. You know, I don't want to inconvenience people and pack them all into, like, a church or something. Oh, yeah. Like, you know, just have a barbecue out back. Make sure there's beer Keep and whiskey casual. because, you know, and, and cigars if we're feeling frisky because that would be what I would want. Right. And I mean, if, if people want to get up on a balcony and share stories, that's cool. But make it casual. You know what I mean? Yeah, and keep it uh, fun. And it was very good. It was a very good testament just to, you know, he made people feel good. So it was, you know, it was it was really good. But, yeah, I'm with you, man. Funeral processions just, no, man, I mean, I, I, way. Like your last act on this, which I know it's not your act, but the last thing you do is just, like, impede traffic, you know? I mean, right. What kind of legacy is that to leave behind? Right. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I see what you're saying. But I mean, if it's like a war hero or something, it's one thing. But, you know, if I die, I do not want to just back up traffic. Don't back up traffic in my name, right? Yeah, yeah you know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right. So uh, we got like two more stories here before we wrap it up. And we we just it wouldn't be a, a current events Tuesday if we didn't do some kind of dumb criminal news, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, let's see. And is this one, where is this one coming out of? Oh, uh, I was seeing if this was... Oh, no. Okay. Usually, it's Florida man. Usually. When we do dumb criminal news. This time, it's coming out of our home state. Really? So, check this out. Found this, uh, uh, well, on Google, but it's from NBC4 uh, in Washington, D.C. But <clears throat> So, uh, last week, a 58-year-old woman named Jennifer, she made her way to the CIA headquarters in Langley, Virginia, hmm. every day... For three straight days, she kept telling them she was there to see a recruiter, but that just didn't seem to pan out for them, right? Mm -hmm. So finally, on the third day, she asked to see one specific person at the CIA. You ready? Uh, I hope so. She asked for, quote, Agent Penis. Agent Penis. (laughs) Agent Penis. Saving the world one sex act at a time, I guess. I, I think don't... Agent Penis is still in the field, actually. I don't <laughs> think, uh, you know. He's a little busy right now. Right. Uh, he was... Oh, never mind. This is the clean <laughs> podcast. I was, man, I had a good, dirty joke I was about throwing there. Um, when the officers in front of the place like wouldn't let her go meet Agent Penis, she told them, quote, do you really think I'm going to leave? So she was arrested for trespassing, and they made her leave. And uh, man, this the CIA is going to owe her a big apology if you know somewhere out there there's an agent penis, and she was like the top recruit. 
You never know, man. That's crazy. Uh, did, did she have like mental like issues? Not that they mentioned in the article, huh. but I mean, I, I don't know, man. I mean, going to the CIA headquarters, the CIA is a dirty bunch, man. It's a you eccentric, uh, yeah. You're, you're pretty brave. I'll give you that. Because yeah. if anybody's gonna make you disappear, it'd be the CIA. Mm-hmm. I mean, after all, they killed uh, JFK, right? I, I, you like conspiracies. We won't get into that deep because this is current events. So we're going to stay on track. But real quick, with all the conspiracy stuff you believe, I was just joking about the JFK mm-hmm. CIA thing. Please don't send anybody to my house if you're wiretapping this. Um, but do you think JFK was killed by the CIA? I've never heard your take on JFK. Man, there, there's a lot of there's there's so many things about that. I, it could have CIA mafia. Who knows? I, I definitely don't think it was cut and dry, just a lone gunman kind of thing. But. I think maybe the CIA worked with. They, they could the have mafia? outsourced some, some mafiosos, yeah. Well, oh, now moving on to our last little story for the day from PRNewsWire.com, which is one we get a lot of stories from. Um, there are a lot of big blockbusters that are dropping, you know, this summer. Uh, and Atomic Tickets recently conducted a survey to find out which summer movies fans were anticipating the most now that Endgame is out the way. Because, right. I mean, I think we were all anticipating Endgame oh, yeah. more than any other movie this year. So what we got, we got a top 10, and we're going to go from 10 down. So sitting at number 10 is Godzilla, King of Monsters, which mm. is coming out May the 31st. I'll go see it. Yeah, I'd like to see it. This one I'm definitely excited to see. It Chapter 2. Okay. It's going to be out September the 6th. This is going to be them grown up. Like It's got a lot of really good people in I it. I still so. got to see the first one. I, I actually, I'm not ashamed, but I'm kind of ashamed to admit I really want to kind of see this. Pokemon Detective Pikachu. It looks fun. Yeah, it looks like a fun romp. Right, I mean, I right. never was a huge Pokemon person. I had like red. I mean, I had like five different games for the Game Boy, but it was never like something I spent all my time doing. It was just yeah. like eh, a little lull and you know whatever, and play a little Pokemon. But yeah. with that said, it looks good, and I mean, it's Ryan Reynolds, so it, I mean, it looks fun. Yeah, I'll, so I'll give it a chance. Men in Black International. I'm curious about this. I haven't seen the other third Men in Black movie. You need to see that. But. You didn't. That's the one with like time travel and stuff. Yeah, That's yeah, really, man. I don't know how that slipped by me. It's pretty good. I mean, I know I, this is kind of like a, a. It's set in the same universe, but it's a little bit of a revamp. So right. it's not like I need to see that one. No, I actually kind of like the third one. Uh, Disney's. Live action Aladdin is out May 24th. And yes, I'm going to go see it because as a kid, Aladdin was my favorite of the Disney cartoons. It was one of my favorites for sure. I'm definitely going to go see it. Like everybody was freaking out about Will Smith as a genie. But now that I've seen the previews, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to give him a chance. Like I like Will Smith a lot, but I mean, it's not out of reality to say that a lot of Will Smith's movies, he's a good actor, but he still plays them all the same. Mm -hmm. You know, where somebody, you know, you've got other actors that just are completely different someone like leonardo dicaprio or denzel washington who some movies they're a hitman some movies they're a you know a wilderness ex you know what i mean like yeah, you know yeah. will smith kind of has but at the end of the day i love will smith i mean fresh prince of bel-air was like my generation's i love lucy i think so um i don't know if that was a good comparison but you get what i'm going yeah, for close right? enough um but I actually watched the trailer and I was like, you know what? I think that he's going to be a good genie. I, I'm one shot, of the man. few hopefuls. Like a lot of people were dogging it. And I'm like, I actually kind of liked what I saw of him as the genie. So I, I've got good expectations for it. Toy Story 4, June the 21st. I am going to go see that. Yeah, man. Don't remember, know if it was necessary, but I'm yeah. going to go see it. Yeah, I saw the original in theaters. I remember that. Good times. You got a friend in me. Oh, well, good to know. <laughs> Dark Phoenix. I am not going to go see that. I'm I'll see it when see it, it. I'll see it when it comes out. I'm June twenty. It's June the seventh is when that drops. It's been a while since I've seen an X Men movie I liked, but I, I'm going to give it a chance. I'm going to go see it. I think I like Days of Future Past. Apocalypse yes. was was a garbage from Go, what I remember. Days of Future's Past and X Men First Class were my two favorites. Yeah, I liked X Two. I liked Days of Future Past. I remember liking First Class, but I haven't seen it since it's in theaters. But I do remember liking it. So I remember I being a kid. It. I read the comics and I watched the cartoon. And after watching that first X Men movie, I was not happy. Even as a kid, I mean, it came out what in like two thousand maybe something like that. I was yeah, like I didn't twelve. Like the, I, I didn't, didn't like the first one. I was stoked after I saw the uh, second one. Uh, the third one. Sucked. I won't as big on the second one either. I won't as big. It really, the only X Men movie that I've liked are Days of Futures Past and First Class. I did not. I, thought, I, I, I went to see Apocalypse expecting it to be awesome, and it was just yeah, man, freaking but, terrible. No, I, I loved X too. Yeah, going back to like the Weapon X program, the fight with the Lady Deathstrike, all that stuff. And you got the Phoenix out. I, I, <laughs> coming around full circle. That's the one you got the Phoenix at the end, right? Yeah. So yeah, I mean, setting you know. up the worst movie they ever did, right? No, I don't know, man. Wolverine Origins. 
Yeah, if you count that, that was that was really crazy. That started strong. You know, Ryan Reynolds' Deadpool on yeah, that was perfection, the and then they but, just ruined it. But yeah, So Dark Phoenix will be out June the 7th, JP, if you want to go see it. I'll be going to see this next one, too. Coming in at number three, John Wick Chapter 3 Parabellum. I haven't seen any of those movies. Man, you're missing out. It's just fun. Like It's, yeah. it's kind of like that old movie, uh, Shoot 'Em Up. Remember, uh, we were talking about that the other day? Either. You never saw that with Clive Owen, but that's a good movie. It's just fun. It's just a yeah. fun action romp. You right. know what I'm saying? And, and and Keanu Reeves is so damn likable. He might not be the best actor out there, but we just love him. He's just yeah. a good guy. He makes fun movies. We can all agree on that. Number two, Disney's live action Lion King coming Ali. out July the 19th. Going all out with the live action movies, huh? Yeah, I'm going to see. I, I, I love the Lion King growing up, but I don't I don't know for sure if I'll go see that yeah, in theaters. But I'm definitely going to see it when it comes out. This next one, I know I will be there probably opening weekend to see. You ready for the number one most anticipated movie of the summer? Oh boy, I hope I am. Coming out on July the 2nd, it's Spider-Man Far From oh, Home. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. In my opinion, Tom Holland is the best Spider-Man they've casted in a live-action movie. Spider-Man 2 with Tobey Maguire still. I won't argue. That's one of the best Spider-Man films ever. Ever. Oh, yeah, one of the best superhero movies. Probably ever, ever made. I yeah. agree. One of the best superhero movies ever made. But yeah. that is in the past in another universe. But the Tom Holland Spider Man, I think, is a perfect blend. Somebody at once said they thought, I think Toby Maguire was a better Peter Parker, but Andrew Garfield was a better Spider Man uh, type deal. I, I was not a fan of The Amazing Spider Man, one nor two. I was not. I thought the Gwen Stacy scene was pretty good with the clock tower. Mm hmm. Aside from that, I was not a, a big. I, I'm not a big fan of Andrew Garfield as it is. I just I right. don't not don't really like the guy. So I mean I, I don't know him personally. I just I'm not a big fan of his work. But um, I'm telling you, man, I don't know which was my favorite Spider-Man movie altogether. But Into the Spider Verse is. I'm renting that, man. I have still not yeah. seen that. I don't know how. I've heard. I've not heard one person. Oh, dude, it was speak amazing. negatively about it. it was not amazing. one person. Yeah, that's really hard to top. I mean, I mean, it's hard to compare that to like live action movies, but. It was great. I've heard, especially as a comic reader, that it's like watching like watching a comic in motion is yep. one thing that people loved about the animation style. Yeah, so great. I'm excited, man. So the survey also found that people are most excited for these actresses' performances. Jennifer Lawrence in The Dark Phoenix, Halle Berry in John Wick 3 Parabellum, and Tessa Thompson in Men in Black International. Now, Tessa Thompson, that's Valkyrie in... Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Right? And she's also in uh, Westworld. Right. Cool, cool. And the actor's performances people are looking forward to is Chris Hemsworth. I didn't, re- I haven't seen anything on Men in Black International, so we've got... Oh, yeah, the trade was We got great. Thor and Valkyrie working together in another project? Mm-hmm. That's awesome, because they were really good together in Ragnarok. Yeah. Uh, Dwayne Johnson and Hobbs and Shaw. Man, I mean, mm, I'm not, oh, I almost said a bad word. I am so sick of the Fast and Furious movies. I was, I was never really a Fast and Furious guy. So. I like the first one okay, even though I go back and watch it, and it's so terrible. Anybody, once you got above the age, once you got to be the driving age, if you ever worked on vehicles, you realized how terrible those movies were. But they're movies, so we accept right. inaccuracy in movies because it's for entertainment. I mean, we love zombie shows, for Christ's sake, where dead people walk around and eat living people. So, it does, But the first movie, I enjoyed Though it was, you know, very cheesy now. Second movie was pretty good. I like Tyrese and Paul Walker. So likable. The third one was where it started getting kind of uh, Tokyo Drift sucked, except for Han. I liked Han. Mm-hmm. Um, but that what does DK stand for? Donkey Kong. It was terrible. And after that, they just became straight up action flicks. Like I did not. I did not know because we. I may or may not have used to do a little street racing. For legality reasons, I may or may not have, but I can tell you right now, I know a lot of people that did a lot of street racing back in the day, and not one of them could do any of these action sequences. Like where, you know what I'm saying? Like none of these people, like like Paul Walker is trained, you know, a trained officer, so Mm -hmm. maybe he's got some skills. But I mean, being a common like street racer slash criminal, all of a sudden gives you these action abilities to like. I was gonna say they might as well be superhero movies. It's it's now, ridiculous. Right? Yeah. yeah, they suck. I will not see. I like I like Jason Statham and I like The Rock, but I will not will not go see anything fat. Once they did the Paul Walker departure, uh-huh. and I only went to see that one. I hadn't seen the few before that. I only went to see that one because it was you know I like Paul Walker and Ooh, you know. Yeah. He's kind of like, I used to say Paul Walker was kind of like Arkeano Reeves, like of our generation. Just kind of this yeah, cool surfer that. guy. Not the yeah, best right. actor in the world, but he just was such a likable dude. And yeah. like Keanu Reeves, Paul Walker was a very big humanitarian, did a lot of really good mm-hmm. things in the world. So I liked Paul Walker. Speaking of like Keanu Reeves, the third most anticipated actor's performance this summer people look forward to is Keanu Reeves and John Wick 3. I 
Got to catch up on those movies. Yeah. I would have thought that Tom Holland as Spider-Man would have gotten one because he's yeah, such man. a good Spider-Man. But um, let's see. Uh, let's see. Here's some movies coming out that actually didn't get any recognition. Hmm. Hmm. They're not really that anticipated, which is a shock for this first one. Quentin Tarantino's new flick, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Oh, it's got yeah. Leonardo DiCaprio and Brad Pitt. I'm stoked for that. I I like, I like watch anything Quentin Tarantino does. No, you know it's going to be over the top and ridiculous, but that's what makes his movie so fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. People aren't really that excited for the live-action Door of the Explorer movie. Huh. Go figure. <laughs> I thought it was funny because they had a um, they had this this spoof a while back on college humor i think they had like a live action door of the explorer and this was like five six years ago mm-hmm. but it was so funny because it's like diego and he's like dora i haven't seen you since i was this many yeah. <laughs> it was like it was but i mean it was it was a joke because it was like surely that wouldn't be a good live action movie but now they're gonna make it happen <laughs> the marvel horror movie new mutants which I was excited for, like, a horror Marvel movie. Yeah. Especially with, like, the new Immortal Hulk going definitely kind of a horror direction. But, so that's set outside of the MCU, though, correct? I guess. It's got Macy Williams from Game of Thrones. I I, I wanted to see it. The Child's Play reboot. Man, come on. You got Luke Skywalker voicing Chucky. Why would you not want to see that? And Aubrey Plaza is playing the mom. And I don't know if you watch Parks and Rec, but Aubrey Plaza is... Hot and awesome. So. Yeah, I like I like her. It's a little weird that they're not throwing any like a voodoo angle in there because you know originally are they not at all? Because I hadn't read much on the story. No, from what I understand, he's just like a, a an evil rogue AI. He's not no voodoo. Spin. What? Yeah, that- it's not because you remember in the original it was a voodoo murder oh, yeah. guy who put himself in the body of a a doll because he was what getting the death penalty or something like no, no, that. No, 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 because he was remember. about to die. But yeah, I knew he was about to die. I like they chased the him through a toy store or whatever. I think he had been shot That's or right. something, That's but he right. was laying there dying, you know, dying basically, so he put his body. Though actually one of the newer Chucky movies was not bad. I can't remember if it was The Curse of Chucky. It was the one where the, with the girl in the wheelchair. Right. The one after that was kind of uh, but the one with her in the house in the wheelchair, that was actually a pretty decent movie. Um but yeah, that's crazy. So he's just like rogue AI. Yeah, he's just a killer robot. He's not a, you know, he's not trying to put his spirit into the spirit of a little kid so he can, you know, get out of the doll because the doll's turning human. But one thing you might be happy about, they're also doing a Chucky TV series. And that's going to be man. that's going to be in the same vein as the uh, as the old movies. So it's going basically going to mm. follow the I don't know if it'll Directly follow the continuity of the movies, but it's going to be set like with it's going to have the same circumstance. So. See, I don't know, movie, man. I, I mean, I the voodoo. Stoked about, I mean, the show I might be more stoked about. The fact that, you know, I the fact as a kid that there was this doll with a man's soul in it that was chasing this little boy down to put his soul into that boy's body was terrifying. Yeah. Aside from the fact that there was a live doll running around. So that kind of I still see it, but that kind of puts it, uh, you know, it kind of disappoints me a bit. Um, now this next one, oh boy, I am excited for, and it might be terrible. I'm expecting it to be terrible, but nonetheless, I am ready for it. Are you ready, JP? I hope so. Scary stories to tell in the dark. Did you ever read those books? I have got all three of them at home. Uh, no, at first I thought you uh, you were talking about, are you afraid of the dark? And I was going to be really stoked, but no, I never read those. I've got all three books at home, and I think they came out with, well, the, the people that created it came out with like a new book a year or two back, and mm-hmm. I, I want to get it. But I've got all three I loved them. They terrified me as a child. Um, I may or may not have done some narrations to those stories on YouTube in the past. Good luck Is finding that, Yeah, right? good luck yeah, finding That's a good digging. challenge for the podcast listeners. I may or may not have a couple of years back, just for the fun of it, just because I do voice work for a living. So I was like, hey, I want to try my hand at narrations. So I may or may not have a channel floating out in the ether of YouTube where I do readings of scary stories, and a majority of them come from scary stories to tell in the dark. I'm, I'm going to do some uh, I mean, I do. You some ain't going to find the channel. You, you will not so. find it. If you no. can find it, man, that would be dope. I know exactly what it's called, and I'm not going to tell you. No. But um, beware, though, if you listen to them, aside from how terrible I probably did, because it was it was not good. I just it was something I put some, but like what I did was put sound effects behind it, and like ominous music. I was just kind of trying my hand at like an audio something place new, or, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah you yeah, know, because cool. I've always told you I loved old school radio where they told stories and had oh, sound yeah. effects in studios. So it's kind of me trying my hand at that. Um, of course, it didn't get like any views, but still, if you could find that. Please let me know, like share the link to the page in the comment section, and I will tell you if that's me or not. But uh, beware, 
those stories, a lot of them have jump scares in them because I love our listeners and I don't want any of them to have like a heart attack because yeah, there are parts. Uh, that would be unfortunate. <clears throat> there's parts where I'll be talking like this and then all of a sudden it gets really oh, loud man. and it'll scare the hell out of you. So just be warned. Also, Annabelle comes home. I didn't even see the first Annabelle. So nah, I haven't seen it. It's another movie. horror flick. Yeah. The new Shaft movie with Samuel L. Jackson that I did not even know was coming out. I'm, you know, I've seen posters. I haven't seen the trailer, but I'm a little, uh, uh, yeah, I'll watch it. Love Sam Jackson. I mean, who doesn't, right? Samuel right. L. How Jackson. Not? Yeah. I love that mother. <laughs> right. Um, the Disney movie, the Disney fantasy, excuse me, Artemis Fowl. Never even heard of that. I don't know what that is. The Angry Birds 2. Never saw the first one. Yeah. And the Bruce Springsteen themed Blinded by the Light movie. Uh, yeah, I won't be seeing that. He's not my boss. You would have thought that saying. that would have been a Man for Man's Earth Band uh, movie title. Blinded by the Light. Yeah, that's true. Revved up like a douche. He actually says douche, but you know a lot of people thought yeah, he said douche. I thought he said like douche me. my whole life. Rev up. I'm like, how do you rev a douche up? They have he like, did they have like a too. mechanical douches back in the old day? Like, yin, yin, time to know. clean that hoo ha. Springsteen know what he's doing. Which eventually became the vibrating dildo. <laughs> Fun fact. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Dirty mind. Dirty mind. But um, so yeah, those are the movies coming out this summer. That's what people are anticipating. Uh, lots of good. I, I love summer blockbusters, man. That's what I love about summer. You get some good flicks. Yeah, you really do. Or at least a big variety of, of movies to see. So. Yeah, man. Hopefully it won't all be garbage. Uh, definitely a few I'm looking forward to. Absolutely. If you like the podcast, again, consider hitting the subscribe button. Tomorrow is Random Rambling Wednesday where we have our uh, we have returning guest Matt Crowder, a good friend of ours here on the podcast and extremely talented musician oh, who yeah. actually wrote a song about JP called uh, Me I and kind JP. I inspired a tune, yeah. You're so inspiring, JP. Me and JP. I felt like I'm boring, so if he wrote a song about me and Justin, it'd be like, we sat on the couch and watched some TV. Hey man, uh, it'd be I relatable. I tried to get up, but he wouldn't let me leave. <laughs> Wait, where is this going? <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm tired of watching YouTube videos. I want to go home. He said, Matt, please don't leave me alone. <laughs> I'm writing it right here on yeah, the podcast. Yeah, man, I'm man. loving it. Go grab your guitar. Uh, right. Let's I lay should. this sucker down. I should. But uh, make sure to follow us. Hit subscribe. We also, Thursday, we do Mail Call Podcast, which is where we answer your questions about really anything. Like, you can ask Nothing us personal questions. Walking Dead, Game of Thrones, um, you know, really whatever. Pose, int- we love the ones that give us, like, would you rather type scenarios. Yeah. Or, like, really thought-provoking questions. We're not the best at them, but I do like to get we my brain moving. So. Uh, but uh, if you want to follow us on social media, you can find JP on Periscope. Uh, it's just all lowercase. No spaces, no nothing. Just JP Slim. JP Slim. Might do one tonight. Uh, Got to remember my tripod. Though. You said you're going to cook something, right? Yeah, cooking some spaghetti. I think some turkey. Yeah. Got some uh, ground turkey. Yeah, a little bit healthier than the red meat. So mm, there you go. You see, do you notice a big difference? Because my girlfriend cooked uh, spaghetti one time with turkey and didn't tell me, and I did notice a little bit of a difference. I was like. Is this? What is this? Like we did? No, it wasn't spaghetti. I'm sorry. It was tacos. Tacos. I mean, it, it can be a little different, but I, I don't think it's, you know, I mean, I, I still think it works. You know, I put a lot, a lot of sauce in there. Saucy. I've been using it for so long, you know, I'm sure I would tell the difference, but last time. You I, just I, got to where you kind of, yeah. you probably I, I ain't doing no right? veggie meat, but I will do some ground turkey. Yeah. All right. So follow him on Snapchat. You can, I mean, excuse me, on Periscope. You can follow me on Instagram, Snapchat, and Periscope by searching I'm Justin Lloyd, all lowercase, two L's in Lloyd, and no apostrophes, just I'm Justin Lloyd. And even though I, we just had a kid, I promise I will not spam it too hard with baby photos. I've put two up. Uh, one, dude, you, one you when, burned it, man. That's, one, your, that's your right. One when she was born, and then one from this morning because she looked like she was plotting something evil. That was a wild picture. Yeah, right? I'm telling you. Yeah. She's scheming. She's like, hmm. Who knows what's going on in those little brains, man? Yeah. So uh, give us a follow, and hopefully we'll see you back here tomorrow. If not, maybe we'll see you back next Tuesday. And if we don't ever see you again, may you have a long, happy, and prosperous life. Mm-hmm. Thank you for spending some time with us. Uh, JP, anything else you want to leave anybody with before we head out? Um, I feel like I did, but no, I guess not. He lost it. So. Yeah. That's going to wrap it up for us. Once again, my name is Justin. And I'm JP. And we are the Podcasting Dead. 